Have you ever wanted to compassionately tell your kid to get over it? How about telling them that's not that big of a deal when they're upset about something and can't seem to see past it? Ooh, or what about the comparison piece? You know, the good old, when I was a kid, or other people, to help them remember that their life isn't that bad. Yeah, me too. So follow-up question, how has that worked? Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live your life on purpose. Today I want to talk about what it actually looks like to show up for your kids after a hard day and some radical acceptance points we as the caregivers need to hold on to. It's easy to minimize the pain of our kids. In our attempts to try and help them move through their distress, we can inadvertently put our own experiences and stories on them, which not only turns the focus to us, but expects them to be at a stage in their processing and development beyond their developmental scope. It's invalidating and a clear empathy miss. But in those moments, we don't mean to be dismissive or hurtful. We want to connect with them. We want to help them feel better. We want to do whatever we can to alleviate their suffering. And in that, we don't mean to, but we forget that they aren't us, and their scope of understanding and moving through the world isn't the same as ours. Distance is incredibly powerful. What used to feel all-consuming may now seem minor. We can understand that the middle school relationship wasn't the end of the world, that we can find love again. We can see that sometimes friends fight or say mean things, and you can get past it. We can see that our whole lives weren't over the one time we got a C, or someone was angry that we accidentally wore the same shirt, or that we didn't make the team. Our contextual scope has expanded over time. That fight in the fifth grade with your best friend is a distant memory. You see there was resolve, regardless of how it ended up. You now know that kids will say mean things, and that it usually has nothing to do with you. We can let go of being picked last for kickball, for not being very athletic, or forgive ourselves for not being perfect in school. We can see that life goes beyond that moment of pain and distress, and that as we got older, what we thought was the end of the world wasn't so bad after all. This is an incredibly important life skill. Contextualization and moving through pain. Celebrate that you have put the work in to get there. And then give space and grace for the fact that your kids aren't there yet. And we don't need to try to get them to that place any quicker than they do on their own. We just need to learn to listen. They aren't 20 years out of middle or high school. They're there now. And it's incredibly difficult, especially in this era. We can't even begin to understand what it's like to be a kid in a time where you are never more than a few feet from connection and the inputs you get on who you should be, what you should look like, and how you measure up in the world are innumerable. It's not reasonable to put the experience of a 45-year-old on a 13-year-old, even if it is to try and protect them from pain. They deserve their heartache and someone willing to be with them instead of trying to dismiss, solve, or absolve them from it. When I was 13, did I think it would be fine when my boyfriend and I broke up? Absolutely not. We dated for two weeks, which was essentially a lifetime. We never talked or hung out outside of a group, but I was sure I was gonna marry this person. And when we broke up, I called our local radio station and made a dedicated request every single day to play NSYNC's I Want You Back, hoping that we'd get back together. Did it work? No. Was I okay? No, I was heartbroken. Did I get over it? Yes, but not because someone else told me that there are more fish in the sea, that it was just a middle school boy, or that I would have plenty of other relationships. All that did was make me feel like I was dumb or invalid or should be stronger. If it's not that big of a deal, then why does it hurt so much? Why can't I be fine? What helped was having people who felt my pain in the same way. People who didn't expect me to be fine and validated how hard it was to be going through something like this. Sure, I know now it was ridiculous to think I would marry this person or that what we had was love. But that wasn't my job at 13. My job was to begin to explore complex emotions and make sense of what it feels like to name and move through them. Now, it's no secret, you love your kids. 
You don't want them to be in pain. We just have to consider what help is actually helpful and what help is about our own distress and tolerance. So the next time you feel the urge to make it all okay, tell them it's not that bad and that they'll be fine or push them to let it go, try this instead. One, let their worst day be their worst day. It's not about you. Don't try and compare. We've been falsely taught that empathy is about connecting with people in our shared experiences. While that is powerful and has a place in some circumstances, this isn't empathy. Empathy is about making the space to understand what it's like for them to walk in their shoes and hold space for the feelings. Two, let go of the idea that pain is a bad thing. We live in a world of toxic positivity and repression. The goal is to be happy, but happiness is an emotion. Emotions aren't good and bad, and they're ever evolving. Sadness, loneliness, anger, resentment, despair, these are all emotions that exist in this world. They're not bad to experience, they just are. Make space to explore why these emotions are hard for you and see what internal narratives you can let go of to see these from a neutral rather than panicked place. Three, use the power of relative relatability. If your child comes home talking about the pain of not getting the part they wanted in the school play or a kid in school saying something mean about them, remember this is their present. Instead of thinking about what you went through in middle or high school, consider how this relates to your life now. What is it like when you didn't get the promotion or job you wanted or when you made a mistake at work? What's it like to fear being judged? What pain do you feel now about loss, rejection, and shame? And how can you connect collectively through the vulnerability you can both experience in facing pain? And finally, number four, let go of the pressure to fix. The drive to make someone feel better or move through something is rooted in our own distress and tolerance. It's okay they're in pain. And sometimes all we need is for someone to validate that it exists and that we're okay to be in it and feeling it right now. Perhaps the greatest gift we can give our kids is not to ask or try and force them to be or feel anything other than what they feel right now. And for us to learn to support their resilience in each process. So as we wrap for today, I want you to let us know in the comments what's sitting with you. What reactions do you have? What opportunity are you taking with you from this video to bring into your life? If you like what you're hearing, give me that thumbs up and share this video with someone else you think could benefit from hearing it. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you want to get an alert every time new content is released. And if you haven't yet made your way onto the AR Insider list, click the link in the show notes and get yourself on there to get exclusive content that I don't share anywhere else, get notes of empowerment and motivation and support in your inbox every other week. And once a month, get an update email of everything that I have going on, new content that's been released, events and discounts for things that I have coming down the pike or that are already out there in the world. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm so excited to be a support for you and how you show up for yourself and your kids. Now remember, you have the right to author your own story, and so do they. So let's take our pen back, let's give them theirs, and let's collectively all write our stories of shame resilience together.